Hi friends, I'm Miss Holly and I'm so happy you've joined me for Sunday School today. This is our unit. Uh, he's here, Jesus's life among us. Here's the supplies you'll need today. The Mark 1 verse 10 coloring sheet, crayons, the Dove printout, a bowl of water that you can um, use later on. And I have a bowl about this size, not like a small cereal bowl size. Um, that would be better. Um, the Jesus is life among us, your grid, the wooden dove, your Crayola paint set, glue, and some newspaper or something to cover your work area. So if you don't have those supplies, go ahead and pause the video to gather them so you'll have them ready. Please join me as we say our opening prayer together. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for the greatest gift of all, Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Help us share the gift of joy, the gift of peace, and the gift of love with everyone we meet. Amen. Today, our lesson is the story of the baptism of Jesus. And you know, last week we left off when Jesus was 12 years old and he was in the temple. And then the Bible tells us that his family returned home to Nazareth where he lived and grew in stature and favor with God and with man. So now, as I told you last week, that was the only story about Jesus as a boy. So we're fast forwarding now to about the time when Jesus is around 30 years old and he is going to get baptized. So let's listen to the story of Jesus's baptism from the Jesus Storybook Bible. This is found in Mark chapter one, verses four through 11. About the same time Jesus was born, another baby was born. His name was John, and God had a special job for him. John was going to get everyone ready for Jesus. The day John was born, his dad knew that God's promise to Abraham was coming true. God was sending the rescuer. John's father was so happy. He said, because God loves us with a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love, heaven is breaking through. He is sending us a light from heaven to shine on us like the sun, to shine on those who live in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. So John grew up and... To tell you the truth, he was a bit unusual. He lived in the desert. He wore itchy, scratchy outfits made of camel hair. He had a big, big, bushy beard and long, long, scraggly hair. And here's the oddest thing of all. He only ate locusts, which are big, creepy, crunchy grasshoppers. He dipped them in honey, probably to disguise the taste. God sent John to tell his people something important. Stop running away from God and run to him instead. John said, you need to be rescued. I have good news. The rescuer is coming. Make your hearts ready for him. Yes, get ready because your king is coming back for you. Great crowds listened to John. They were sorry they had sinned and they wanted to stop running away from God. They wanted to be rescued, so John baptized them, which means he plunged them in and out of the water. It showed that they wanted to follow God and begin a new life. One day, John was baptizing people in the Jordan River as usual when he looked up and saw a man walking down to the water's edge. God spoke quietly to John, this is the one. John's heart leapt. This was the moment he had been waiting for all his life. Look, John said as Jesus came down into the water, but his voice only came out as a whisper. He couldn't make it any louder. 
It was all he could do to even speak. The Lamb of God, God's best Lamb, who takes away the sin of the whole world. Will you baptize me too? Jesus asked. Who am I, John asked, to baptize you? It is what God wants me to do, Jesus said. So John baptized Jesus. Suddenly, it was as if someone had drawn back curtains in a dark room, as if heaven had itself opened because a beautiful bright light broke through the clouds and shone down on Jesus. Beads of water glittered and sparkled like tiny diamonds in his hair. A white dove flew down and gently rested on Jesus, and a voice came down from heaven. It was clear and strong and loud so everyone could hear. This is my own son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him, God said. Listen to him. Heaven had broken through. The great rescue had begun. Now, let's watch a cartoon version of that same story. Come and see the baptism of Jesus. This is Jesus, hey who's the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Jesus was born in Bethlehem and grew up in Nazareth, where he grew in wisdom and favor with God and man. Oh, I see. This is John the Baptist. Hey! John loved God with his whole heart. Hey, all you! And he told everyone that the Savior of the world was coming soon. Wow! Come on! John baptized people in the Jordan River. And one day, Jesus went to this river to be baptized by John. Hold on. But John tried to talk him out of it. Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. Eh, okay. So John baptized Jesus. And as Jesus came out of the water, the heavens opened and John saw the Holy Spirit coming down as a dove and resting on Jesus. A voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved son, who brings me great joy. And John knew, without any doubt, that this was the one they had all been waiting for. This was the chosen one of God who would take away the sin of the world. Well, at the time of the story we just heard, Jesus hadn't yet started his ministry. He'd been working as a carpenter in the town of Nazareth, and people were still waiting for the Messiah to be revealed. They didn't know it was Jesus. Even John didn't know who it was, but God had given John a special sign to look for. God told John that he would see God's spirit descend on someone, and that would be the promised Messiah. So let's talk a little bit more about John the Baptist. John was a messenger who lived in the wilderness. And as we said in the story, he was a little bit of a strange one. He lived out and he wore camel's hair for his clothes and he ate locust, but people still came out to hear him preach and to hear what he had to say. John taught people that they must prepare their hearts for the rescuer by repenting of their sins. And he, they did that when he baptized them in the River Jordan. Even today, people are baptized to show that they are giving their lives to God. John told people that he baptized them with water, but someone would come after him who would baptize them with the Holy Spirit. And who do you think it turned out that he was talking about? Well, if you guess Jesus, you're absolutely right. And one day, Jesus came to see John as he was baptizing people. He came to the riverbank and asked John to baptize him too. And John thought that Jesus should be baptizing him instead 
and he asked if he would get could get baptized by Jesus. But Jesus said, it's God's plan for you to baptize me. So John agreed and he baptized Jesus right there in the Jordan River. And as Jesus came up out of the water, John saw the sign he'd been waiting for. The Holy Spirit descended on Jesus in the form of a dove. And then he heard the voice of God saying, this is my son whom I love and with him I am well pleased. And John knew at that point without a doubt that Jesus was the Messiah, the rescuer that God had promised so long ago. Let's listen to that again. God said, this is my son whom I love and with whom I am well pleased. Wow, wouldn't that be great if we could hear God's voice say those words to us and about us? And even though we probably don't hear God's voice speaking out directly to us like that, we know that God loves each and every one of us in that same exact way. God is our heavenly father and we are all his beloved children. Now let's think some about the baptisms that we do in our church as we listen to a story called God Makes Me His Child in Baptism. Dad is calling. It's time to go now. Today is a special Sunday. Today, my baby cousin John is going to be baptized. This Sunday, we sit in the front of the church. The pastor and John's parents stand in front of everyone in the church. Two other people stand there too. One is holding John. They both answer questions for him. Mother says they are his sponsors. And in our church, we call that godparents. The pastor makes the sign of the cross over John's head and over his heart. I know that Jesus died on the cross for John's sins and for everybody's sins. We want John to believe that too. The pastor uses a little dish shaped like a shell to pour water over John's head. He pours the water three times and says, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Mother whispers to me, that's what happened at your baptism too. My sponsors are Aunt Ruth and Uncle Mark. When I was baptized, they said they would pray for me and help me learn God's word and help me remember my baptism. When we're baptized, God makes us part of his family. It's a great, great, great big family. God's family lives all over the world. God's family is called the church. I'm glad mother and dad wanted me to be baptized. I'm glad they wanted me to be in God's family. God wants me to be his child all my life, when I'm little and when I'm big. God promises to be with me all my life and to take me to heaven when I die. He promised this when I was baptized. I hear this promise every Sunday in church. My whole family is in God's family. We have fun together. But sometimes I act as if I don't love my parents. Sometimes I act if, as if I'm not God's child. I sin, but I am sorry for my sin. God still wants me to be his child. God keeps the promise he made in my baptism. God forgives my sin because of Jesus. God, the Holy Spirit, keeps me in God's family. The Holy Spirit helps me remember my baptism. He helps me remember God's promises. He talks to me through his word, the Bible. He helps me try to do what God wants. And he helps me love God and mother and dad and everybody. Lots of people don't know about God. I pray for them. I want someone to tell them about God. I want them to be baptized too and have God's promises. God, the Holy Spirit, lives in my heart. 
He helps me praise God for his love. He helps me live as God's child. And today, he helped me remember my baptism. He will help John remember his baptism too. The end. Just like the book says, we can remember our own baptisms every time we see a baptism in the church. And because of our baptism, we know that God and the Holy Spirit live in our heart. Here's something that I have as a way to remember baptism of my children. It's a special candle that I have, and you probably have some of these too in your house for the people that were baptized at our church. We give these candles to the parents when their children are baptized as a symbol to take God's light out into the world. And now we have an activity that we're going to do. There's many different symbols that remind us of our connection with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit that are used in the Bible. And doves are often the symbols of God and the Holy Spirit. So this activity will help you to remember your connection to God and to the Holy Spirit. So take out the dove that's printed on the white paper and we're gonna use that as we do this activity. So the first thing to do is to think about how God is proud of you for being your unique self and think about the things that make you who you are. It could be your favorite things that you like to do, your favorite food, your smile, your laugh, anything about you that makes you yourself. So you can write or draw those things inside your dove. So if you want to pause the video for a minute and draw in some things that make you who you are. And when you're finished, you can push play again. The next thing to do is think about people in your life who make you feel loved and connected to God. This could be your parents, your grandparents, your brothers and sisters, your teachers, your friends, or anyone who helps you feel God's love. So you can write the names or you can draw pictures of those people in your dove too. So you can pause the video for a minute while you add those things to your dove. Start it back whenever you're ready for the next step. The next step is to cut out your dove along the dotted line so it'll look like the one I have on the screen. So you can pause your video now while you cut the dove and start it back when you're ready to move on to the next step. Once you have your dove ready and cut out, you can put it in the bowl of water, but you'll place your dove on top of the water with the writing or drawing side facing you. So you'll take your hand now and you'll put it up in and you'll swirl your hand around in the water. And as you do that, you can repeat this prayer after me. Loving God, we know that you are always with us and that you love us. Help us notice people and things in our lives that connect us with you. Guide us to follow you and to make you proud. Amen. Think about how all the great things about you that make you unique and how all the great people in your life connect you with God. Now take your hand out of the water and touch it to your forehead or your heart. And as you feel the water on your skin, remember that God loves you and your family loves you and your Christ Church family loves you too. Our symbol for today from today's Bible story is a dove. 
the dove will remind us of the story of Jesus's baptism, and it can remind us that the Holy Spirit lives inside all of us. And for this craft, you'll use your Crayola paint and paint your dove any color that you choose. And also, you can color the background square any color that you choose. You can do that while the paint is drying. And then once the paint is dry, you can glue the dove onto the square that says Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 11, because that's where our story is found in the Bible. And here's what mine looked like whenever I had painted my dove and glued it to my page. I know it'll take you a little bit of time to finish up painting, but let's go ahead and if you pause now, we'll have our closing prayer. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we know you are always with us and that you always love us. Thank you for special people in our lives who love us. Thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. And remember to love others and to let the Holy Spirit shine out in your life. Have a great week and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.